The fourth column is the natural outflow of the first three columns. It's about being the channel for Jesus to love people unconditionally through us. The more time we spend with Jesus, the more we are transformed into His character. And then a lifestyle of disciple-making is the natural outflow of our lives. Column 4 is about the how-to of making disciples, of loving well. We have to understand the strategic importance of multiplication. We have to follow the principles of Jesus' strategy in Luke 10 and find the person of peace. On this slide, the process looks like this. Go according to Luke 10 verse 1 to 9. Find the persons of peace. And when you discover the person of peace, you share your personal testimony. Teach him how to do a personal discovery Bible study and put him in a group setting. The next stage is to gather them in a disciple-making group. This lesson is about the contents of such a group meeting. What does the Bible teach about gatherings? In Acts 2 we see that the first Christians committed themselves to the teaching of the apostles, the life together, the common meal, and the prayers. And as they praised God, people in general liked what they saw. Every day their number grew as God added those who were saved. We can discern four important elements. Discipleship is not about sharing knowledge, but about sharing your everyday, ordinary life. We were not created to live as individuals. It is when we live together that we serve one another and learn how to love one another. The group then becomes a gymnasium where I practice this love to be better equipped to love those outside of the group. Our everyday common experiences become opportunities to recognize Jesus' presence. Jesus is in everything. He does not cause everything, but He is present in everything. And by sharing our lives, we share what God is doing and help one another to react applicably on Jesus' presence. This also includes that we must be accountable to one another. It is so much easier for the evil one to lead us astray if I'm not accountable to anybody else. Then I become a law unto myself. Invite them to share their life of the past week. Ask questions like, What are you thankful for during the past week? This is how you teach them how to pray. Or, What has stretched you out this week? Or maybe, what do you need for things to be better? This again gives you an agenda for intercession. Keep the members accountable towards the group by asking questions like, Are you spending time with the Lord each day in prayer and Bible study? Are you sharing Jesus with unbelievers? Have you obeyed the truths we learned in last week's Bible study? What changed in your life the past week as the result of last week's scripture? The meeting is not about people. It's about God. An opportunity to praise God for who He is and what He has done. When they talk about things they are thankful for, this will become worship. When they talk about the changes they made in their lives as they respond to scripture, this will become worship. Eventually, your group will sing praises. The DNA for worship, however, is embedded long before they start to sing. Worship can include hymns, verses from the Bible, etc. We want the new disciple to know how to eat the Word of God himself, so that the new disciple can learn and discover what God says in the Word for himself. In Hebrews we read, you have been believers so long that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's Word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. Where does milk come from? It comes from the animal or mother who eats the food and digests it so that it can be given in an easy liquid form for the baby. Too many followers know how to drink milk that other teachers or preachers 
have digested for them. They never learn how to eat the solid food, the Word of God themselves. Discovery Bible Study teaches the new disciple how to eat solid food for himself. Note that in the group Discovery Bible Study, there is no writing. Writing was only for the personal DBS that we do alone. Note that we are in a group. The participants are speaking to each other in the group and they are not writing. 1. Ask two people to take turns reading the scripture verses or story out loud. 2. Each person prayerfully reads the scripture in silence several times for himself, listening to the Spirit what he wants to lay on their hearts. 3. Each person in the group takes turns speaking to the group what they learned from the verses or story. No writing. 4. Each person in the group takes turns speaking to the group how they will obey the verses or story in a very practical way. Important. This is not only about good intentions. Encourage people to listen for specific what, how, and when instructions, even if they have to commit to further praying in the week to come. Ask them, if you believe this message is from God, what would you have to change in your life? Jesus equated obedience to love in the Gospel of John. If you love me, you will obey what I command. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. This is love for God, to obey His commands. Use any prayer method the Spirit lays on your heart. Ask the group what they want to pray for. Pray that the Spirit will empower members to be obedient in what they received from the DBS. Specially pray for repentance of people that the group nominates. Pray that the Spirit will send unbelievers and new believers on your way to disciple. You can even ask the people who they plan to disciple in the next week. The group leader must take great care not to talk too much. You are the facilitator of the meeting, not the controller. It's your job to get the people to participate. Don't kill the meeting by preaching. Your responsibility is to bring them before the Spirit, not before you and your insights. Trust the Spirit to do His work. Create a platform or opportunity for your disciples to take part and share spontaneously. Encourage everyone to share and participate. In Corinthians we read, What then shall we say, brothers and sisters? When you come together, each one of you has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. From this verse, we learn that everyone participates in the gathering and shares as the Holy Spirit leads. Every believer's contribution is equally important. Everybody must get the opportunity to exercise his special gift. Everyone can hear the Spirit speaking, and therefore we are all enriched when we listen to all the revelations. It is extremely important that everybody is equally important. Groups are Jesus' strategy for protecting and building His character into His followers' lives. Have a look at this humoristic example.